Perfect. Can everybody hear me? Can you guys just give me a why if you can see my screen and you can hear my voice, please? I just want to make sure we do a little quick housekeeping before we get started. I'd hate to kick things off and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, we can't go on. So if you could give me a, a yes or a no, that'd be great. Fantastic. Okay, I see a few names I'm familiar with. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, Jeanette and her team over at Trade Thirsty for having me in. Um, you know, I'm, I'm an actions oriented guy. Uh, I'm sure there's been a lot of great content covered this morning and, and the work that goes into these guys' presentations. Um, you know, there's a lot of intelligence. For me, I'm an active trader. So if you're in here and you're looking to first, you know, see some results and then essentially see exactly how we're getting those results, then you're in the right place. Um, we're going to cover a strategy. Uh, Jeanette's asked me to keep this education based, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, we're going to first start things off by giving you some links so that at the end of the event you can go and watch some video content. We all know video is key nowadays. Uh, it's the best way to learn, and that way you can get some things right. So I'm going to give you a couple links here. I think it's the best way to, to kick this off. I'm going to put our website in the chat box. There's the link for that. And I've not posted it to everybody, so I'm going to post it to everybody now. There we go. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you over to our YouTube channel. This is important. We put a lot of active trades, a lot of trade market recaps. Uh, there's not just me behind the scenes here. It's me and a few other traders. Um, this is a big one, guys. This is performance, validated broker statement performance. I think this is even more important than anything because ultimately uh, – if you're going to listen to what I'm going to show you, the biggest question here is, can you show me that you're actually making money? No games, no competitions, real bacon, okay? So that being said, guys, you can sign up. You can do some browsing around. I want to get into the presentation. I've got a lot of stuff to cover, and I like to get things done. We're going to talk about futures trading strategies. Can you guys give me a why in the chat box if you're a futures trader? I think that's important. I want to understand the audience. I want to understand who's here. Can you guys give me a why, a yes, or a no if you trade futures? Okay, Joel, Brad, Tom, Jack, John. I can't read the names that fast, but uh, trust me, I see them coming in. That's fantastic. Okay, so if you're a stock trader, if you're a Forex trader, an options trader, or a futures trader, any of the tools that I demonstrate today can be used on all of the asset classes that I just mentioned. I'm a futures trader. We run tr futures trading rooms. We will be rolling out crypto trading programs, Forex trading programs, stock programs. We're expanding operations drastically, but for now, we specialize in futures. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about three core concepts that I use to trade the combines for top step trader. I'm going through a process right now and I'll explain what's happening. We've got a very, very star trader that runs one of our main trading rooms. His performance is one of the best I've ever seen in the business in my life. I've been doing this since the crash of 08. I've also got some pretty big people coming in and headhunting him right now. He's doing some numbers that most people don't think are possible, but we've got the broker statements to prove it, so this is why we're here. Okay, um, first and foremost, we trade two different trading rooms. Okay, so we run a market profile uh, room and we also run an order flow and supply and demand room. So today I'm going to focus on how I bridge the two together and show you that even with a very, very, very small strategy uh, or account base, you can actually succeed as a trader and we'll show you the performance on that here in just a moment. Okay, so I do need to cover a very quick disclaimer, guys. Read it over, understand the risks. I know we've all been here before. However, it's very important we understand that because I am gonna be demonstrating some performance results and some statements, so I think it's important we understand that by legislation. Okay, we've seen that before, let's get started. Quickly, I'm going to introduce my team. It's not just me. I would not be here if it wasn't for people like Jeanette and her team. I have a team as well. I'm just the front-end guy that's basically trading and making sure everything works fine. Then I'm going to show you performance. If I didn't show you performance, I would expect your eyes to roll over and not listen to me about 15 minutes into the presentation because that's what happens in this business. There's too much fluff, not enough proof. Okay. Then I'm going to ask you some very, very important questions because if I can't relate with you as a trader, then I don't expect you to listen to me either. Okay, the, the main thing here is that it doesn't matter what you trade. If you're a day trader, a scalper, a swing trader, if you trade on one platform or another, there's always what we call the constants of the market. They're never going to change. 
So whether you're listening to the presenter before me or the presenter after me, there's always constants in the market for what they do, for what I do, for what they're going to do after, because that's how the financial markets and the auction process is made up. Right? So it doesn't matter if you're scalping or if you're an investor. The constants are always a factor no matter who you are and what you're trading. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I use the constants to use for our strategies because essentially institutions look at the market as an auction because of the size they trade. Yes, HFTs do exist. We do get, we do get comments on that a lot of times. How do we compete against Wall Street, the brokers, and all that stuff? My answer to that, guys, is you're not competing. You'll never win. They're always going to run us over. So let's just understand how they set the market and trade around it and let them create the movement and the volatility that we need. Okay. Um, market profile. Has anybody ever heard of market profile before? Can you guys give me a why if you've ever heard of it? Um, you know, looking at time, price, opportunity, market profile, volume profile, this type of stuff. It's very important that I ask that moving in so I understand the skill sets of the group. Fantastic. Okay. What about order flow? Institutional order flow? Okay. Supply and demand and support and resistance. These are four key components to the market. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you a strategy I'm using. Has anybody here ever heard of Top Step Trader? Give me a why if you've heard of Top Step Trader. A lot of people come to companies like us and they say, Sean, you know, I've, I've lost a lot of money. I'm really battered by the market and uh, I'm really looking to trade someone else's money because uh, I don't have the capital. Has anybody here ever felt like that? We've got some traders that <clears throat> trade large accounts and we've got a, an educator that trades a very large account and he, and, he, and he demonstrates that on a daily basis. But a lot of traders get overwhelmed by that, right? They see one trade, he makes $10,000 in, in five minutes. And then the guys trading the $3,000 account get pretty upset because they can't compare, they can't relate, right? So what I did as the owner of GZT is I said, I'm going to run myself through the combines because most people don't get through them. Combines are basically where you, you go through a competition. And if you pass the competition, they fund you capital. You end up becoming a back trader for uh, an equity partner on the CME. And you basically become a prop firm trader for a hedge fund for futures, right? So where I'm going with this story, and then we'll get into the content, is, is uh, I wanted to prove to all the traders that it's possible to take a, you know, trade one and two contracts and still be able to make several thousand dollars as long as you know what you're doing. Because anybody can slap a 10 lot and make five grand in a couple minutes if you catch the right trade. But that's not trading. That's not consistency. That's called gambling. And we're not here to teach you gambling. We're here to teach you consistency. So I'm doing that right now. I'm going to show you the performance of the combines. So you can see that there's no resetting the SIM buttons. There's no, you know, I can't let anybody else. They watch the combines. They, they basically monitor them. And I'm going to show you that so that you can see that, yes, there's big performance on our site with broker statements, but there's also the ability for guys that are coming in with small money to play the game and do quite well. Okay, so give me a why if that sounds appealing to you. I want to make sure you're all engaged. Jeanette's not on coffee, but I'm on my second espresso. So if you see me get a bit excited, this is a coffee shop environment to me. It's, uh, it's like people sleep in. I like to get up and, and look at the markets even when they're closed. And if you're like me, then you're in the right place. Okay. So my name is Sean Kozak. That's my desk. That's my cockpit. I trade eight monitors, but I trade on four screens. The other four are here to run the business. Okay. We've got a pretty dynamic team. Like I said, I wouldn't be here without them. Ben runs head of support. He's coded over 1,500 indicators for multi-platforms. He runs support for three other companies on my, as well as myself, all at the same time. The guy's a machine. I'll never let him go. He's unbelievable. So if you're wondering if we can service the requests of your needs, absolutely. Okay. Michael and Raul are our star traders. Michael trades in order flow and supply and demand room. He scalps the market using order flow and supply and demand. Raul trades market profile on larger time frames, and he's the best trader I've ever seen in my entire life. He's had three losing months in three years, and he's already generated over $150,000 of realized returns in the last three months. All right, those statements are on our site. We'll show you the broker statements so that you can say, is this for real? Yes, it is for real. Okay, best trader I've ever seen. I'm learning from him. Raul Rivera, Steve, Raul Rivera. He owns MarketProfile.com, and uh, he's the owner of the market profile software that we use. But him and I work together as very, very good friends and partners in the business. You know him? Yeah, he's very good. He's very, very good. But I'm just fortunate to be working with guys like him because we can help people like you. Okay, so 
We have some of the best programmers in the world. Uh, I spend a lot of time uh, going out and finding the best of the best. Some of the guys that have coded our software code for Northrop Drummond, so they design the algorithms for the AI machines in, uh, I guess you would say in the U.S. Navy, the fighter jets that, that run on the U.S. Marines and the Navy uh, SEALs. They, they basically are the programmers for their AI computers for their fighter jets, so you can see the level of acumen that we work with from our programming standpoint. We don't sell rudimentary tools, we sell Rolls-Royce indicators. So we're not here to sell you a bunch of indicators today, I'm here to teach you a strategy. Using that strategy is some of the software that we design, but I do want to make it noted that we'll teach you how to trade first before you ever have to buy software from us, okay? And Ashley, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her because, you know, Ashley and Jeanette talk when we're trading, right? So that's the important part of marketing and sales, we want to make sure we can get our message to the masses like yourselves. So let's get out of the fluff, guys. Promise no more of it. We're going to get right into the meat and potatoes. This is a picture of Raul's statements before this week, I believe. So he he has a very, very large account. He trades a quarter million dollar account. He started it two, three years ago at 100000 but he pays himself actively as a business. What I'd like to do is I'd like to go over to my website, okay? And I'd like to show you where you can find this performance. If you go to goldenzonetrading.com, okay? And you go to the training tab, okay? It's very important that you do this because most people don't believe it until they see it. You go to the educator performance tab. Now, what I do is, is we've created a policy in the business that if you're going to learn how to trade with us, okay, then at least, at least allow us the opportunity to post what we're doing on an ongoing basis so that there's a reason for you to want to believe the merits of what we're talking about. Okay, so Raul Rivera, like I said, he's the star, and we're all stars in our own ways, right? But this is a breakdown of his performance. Now, you're going to say, oh, anybody can put these numbers in a spreadsheet, okay? Who couldn't? Anybody could. Down here, what we've done is we've got links, okay, to all the broker statements from Philip Capital, okay? So if we go back to February of 2018, which is last month, there it is right there. Realize p and made $52,000 last month's trading. Um, if we go to the year-end summary of 2016, then we've got September 2017, January 2018, right? So we could go all the way through monthly performance. They're all here, guys. If we go to January, you can take a look at his made 54,000 in January, December, right? He made uh, realized P&L because he didn't trade much in December. November, right? 15,000. October, 8,000, right? So you can see here. But if you just want to go to the actual monthly performance tab, it's right here. Okay, so we just summarize this, guys. We're on a really big tear because I believe he's increased his, uh, his size a bit because of the performance. But what we've done is we've basically, we've basically done a, a comparison, right? So you'll see these two columns on the right-hand side here. This is if you're trading a $10,000 account. So he's trading a big account. We want to compare it to the guys that are coming in with smaller size, right? Because at the end of the day, a percentage return is a percentage return. Okay, so... If you were comparing what he's doing with his experience, it's a pretty good return on investment, even if you're trading small money, right? Couple grand a month is a decent return if you're trading small money. Would you guys agree with that? Give me a why if you could verify that that would be something you would agree with. Joel says yes. Is Joel the only one? Mike's now coming in, Jack, Larry, Abdullah, right? So if you're trading a $10,000 account and you're generating 20% a month, even if you were generating 10% a month, half of what he's doing because he's an experienced trader, wouldn't 10% a month still equate to 100% return on your account over the year? I'm not saying you're going to get 100% return on your account, right? What I am saying is that here's proof in the pudding that it's possible, and I'd like to show you some of the things that we do that actually make that possible. Okay, so if you have any questions, you can spend all day looking at that stuff. I don't want that to be the meat and potatoes of the event. Michael Black's also got his in here as well. He trades a small account and he scalps, right? So it, we run two trading rooms, and when you subscribe to our trading room, you get both for the price of one. So there's a benefit to why we're here, guys. Um, and we believe in the, the concept that, you know, you learn and earn before you turn and burn. That's a saying I made up now. I'm feeling pretty proud of it because... If you're going to do what we do, come in and learn it first, and then if you decide that the software and the method is what you're looking for, then you can invest further. Most people do it the other way around, and their, their customer base and their size of the room stay very small. We have hundreds of traders that trade with us. 
because we trade for money. We make money, right? We don't just teach, we trade. So if you think that's appealing to you, give me a why. If you're looking to trade with professional futures traders that make money, make guap as they say, then you're in the right webinar. And I'm grateful that Jeanette gave me the opportunity to show you some of this stuff, okay? Let's kick things off. That's a breakdown of the markets he trades. He trades every market. I'm showing you his performance because he runs one of the trading rooms, okay? So I think it's important that if you're going to learn from somebody, you want to know whether or not they're going to teach you based off what they're doing. This is realized proof statement backed returns, okay, guys? So now let's ask you guys a very important skill testing question, emotional question. This is as real as it gets in here. Can you guys tell me honestly and be as real as you've ever been in your life. Are you actually where you want to be right now with your trading? This is a very, very, very serious question to me. I've blown out accounts. I've lost money. I've wanted to throw my computers through the windows. I fought with my family. I fought with myself. I've been very bitter. I've been very happy on one day and then extremely upset the next. Okay? This is a real game, guys. This is serious. Joel says, sounds like me, never, but make money. Yeah, there's room for improvement. The reason I, and, and this is sometimes used as a marketing gimmick, and I'm going to tell you right now, this is talked about by me because I live it. I live it, guys, right? When I take a loss, I don't sit there and tell myself, oh, it's part of the business. I hate taking losses. I can't stand it. I get upset. I go to the gym. And I slam the weights around because I have to calm myself down. That's just me. That's just me, but I can tell you right now that there's a lot of other people that can relate with that, and if they're not able to honestly admit that, then I would say, hmm, I don't really know if you're actually trading. You might be in sim, right? So a lot of times we start blindfolded to the realities of what's actually going on in the marketplace. We come in, we get excited, oh, we're going to hit it big. We join these trading competitions, and we join all these chat rooms and these things, and then there's so much confusion because who do you listen to? It's like when you go to the gym and you see the bodybuilder on one side of the room and you see the other guy at the other side of the room who's 350 pounds on his cell phone, Snapchat and some other guy, right? The reality is if you go to the gym, you want to listen to the guy that's got the body that you want or the girl that's got the body that you want. You don't go to the gym and you ask the guy that struggles, right, to teach you. So if you want to get somewhere, don't stay sunken underwater treading for your life, feeling alone, which I know what it's like to feel alone because when I'm sitting here seeing a whole bunch of other people take a win and I'm taking a loss, I don't want to say, hey, you know, guys, uh, I don't know why I keep hitting the button to buy or sell the market when I know I should have been sitting on my hands, right? Then what happens? You come to a webinar and you buy more software or you buy the next thing. We call that the shiny object syndrome. I can't stand it because it's the reality. We think we're going to get this next indicator. Well, that strategy sounds good. The real problem is we don't know why we're listening to the wrong people. And it's not that there's not a lot of knowledge. There's a lot of great companies and trade rooms out there, guys, and a lot of them make a lot of money. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they might be the right people for you to listen to or it might not be the right truth for you. You might come into a trading room and say, you know what, this guy's killing it. Try to trade the strategy and you just can't make it work for you. That's the truth of the business too, right? So what we did was we designed an environment that provides what we call dynamic learning. So we have two different sides of the equation. We have scalping with an order flow and supply and demand environment that trades and we also have larger time frame trading, interest swing trading with market profile so that you can learn trend and you can learn counter trend and you can learn intraday scalp and then intraday swing so that you can find the way that you can trade best and you can stop wasting time. Because time is more important than money because the more time you spend learning and burning, the less time you have to make money and then next thing you know, you're fighting with your wife or your husband, you know, you're, you're miserable. You know, you can't figure out why your, 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 your quality of life has just gone right out the window. Everybody gets in the business to trade because they want to increase their quality of life, not because they want to learn how to become more miserable. 
Can you guys agree with me that, that, that at least you can relate with what I'm saying right there? Because I've been there. First couple of years I traded, my quality of life went right out the window. I was a miserable you-know-what. That's the truth. Okay? Jack, Abdullah, and Barjinder are honest with me. Is there anybody else in here that's gone through that path? You may not be there now, but at least resonate with the fact that there's been truth to what I've said towards your lifestyle maybe. Okay, and the reason I say this is this is a business just as much as it is a passion. If you're here on a Saturday, it's because you're passionate about the markets. End of story. I get it. But it's also a business. It's a very serious business. It's why Wall Street makes billions of dollars doing this. And no matter what happens in the world, there will always be financial markets. So there's always going to be an opportunity for you to make money and grow as a trader, but you must learn who to listen to first and make sure you're with the right people. Okay? So let's get into the action part of teaching you the strategy now. I've got 23 minutes. Let's get into teaching you what to do. Okay? The constants of the markets are very simple. It doesn't matter if you trade stocks, futures, forex, options, pairs, cryptocurrencies. You're in a fake account, a real account. Fractal analysis starts at the top down. You're either scalping on a one minute time frame, a four range bar, or you're swing trading on a weekly or a daily chart. It doesn't matter. A fractal is how you always start breaking down. Now fractals could be minute charts, range charts, uh, Renko bars, Hike and Ashy, Kiji bars, line charts, what doesn't matter? It's a fractal, right? And then what happens is you end up moving over to what we call the constant cycle of all factors. Now, I've got these abbreviated for the sake of a diagram. SD stands for, and I'm going to grab a little draw tool here so I get fun. Okay, SD is supply and demand. We are, when we talk about trading the market, it's an auction. Years ago, we all used, they all used to sit down at the floor with papers in their hands, the pits. It's an auction. It's like going to, the, going to buy a car, and they're saying, here, bada, bada, here, bada, bada, swing, bada, bada, and they're swinging the, the paper. It's like, bid, bid, buy, sell. It's an auction until they computerized it, and then half the traders that used to make killings fell flat on their face because it's a different environment. I know floor traders that used to make millions and millions of dollars that struggle to break even because they can't adapt to technology. But why do I start with supply and demand? Because it's the economics of the business. It's like the shoe business. It's like the hair business. It's like the online business. Supply and demand is the driving factor of all business. It's the law of economics. And we can teach you how to identify supply and demand on a chart using volume profile, using market profile, using what we call the auction process so that you can actually think like the bigger traders do that have millions of dollars of liquidity that are not worried about getting in under a five minute time frame. I don't know if you guys know this, but any traders trading size, okay, looking at managing portfolios, they're day trading the market, hands down they're day trading the market, but they're not day trading it most likely on the time frames you're trading on. That's why guys like Raul, my star trader, he makes you know $30,000 in a week day trading, but he's trading on a slightly larger time frame than what most of you guys are learning how to do. There's a reason for that, because he trades like the institutions. He trades on tool sets that were designed by institutions when they made the switch from in the pits to electronic trading. All these really fancy tools that we see nowadays are just made by guys that are trying to reinvent a wheel, and it's not necessary. Now, we have great tools, but every one of our tools are designed based off something that needs to be there, not that we just force it to be there. TPO, time, price, opportunity, okay? Time, price, opportunity is called TPO. VPO is volume, price, opportunity. Market profile and volume profile are two separate things, but they do similar concepts in the market. Order flow is the exchange of the orders, okay? Volume measures participation. Support and resistance is measured by the market structure. And momentum measures velocity of price movement. So 
at any given time, every single one of these factors is true in the market. It doesn't matter who you are or what you trade. I can statistically prove with 100% certainty that every second of every time the market is open, every one of these factors exists. Yeah, you can, OM. You can get notified of Rawls webinars. That's why we're here. And we will be doing a lot more presentations with Jeanette and them because we've got a lot of things coming down the pipeline that are very exciting for all of us. But here, I want to teach you how to trade today. I want to teach you how to trade a trend strategy using market profile, supply and demand, and support and resistance. I could teach you how to trade strategies on all of these, but I want to keep it simple for the today's factor and then bring you into a trading room and, and over the next couple of weeks and show you how to make some money. Okay? So what is MOMO? Momentum. It's my own little abbreviation, MOMO, Momentum. I could put MO, right, but then it sounds like a name. MOMO is Momentum. Okay? So what I'd like to do is, is I'd like to talk that you don't need to use all of them at the same time, but it's important to understand what they're doing and what they're doing to impact the market. Supply and demand tells us when there is abundance or when there is a deficit. Okay, so when we talk about this, supply and demand is about understanding when there is an abundance or when there's a lack in perception in the market. Okay, have you guys ever seen a news event come out and it's a negative release, but the market rallies all the way to the moon? And you're like, well, isn't that supposed to go down? The, the release was negative. No, it may be negative in a number on a chart, but what happens if all of the institutions seen that as it was negative, but it wasn't as negative as they expected, so it's a huge, huge bonus for them to push the market higher. It's all relative to perception. And let's get this out of the way. Institutions plus HFTs, okay, equals... Who cares? Okay? Who cares? That's my motto. I don't care what the HFTs are doing. I don't care what the institutions are doing because the moment you start focusing on what they're doing is you lose track of what you're supposed to be doing as a financial trader. You can't control what they're doing. You're not, you don't have access to their platforms. You don't have access to their resources. You don't have access to their people. And they're way more capitalized and they're way more resourceful than all of us in this room ever put together at the same time. Can we all agree with that? Who cares? Let's get down to how you can trade the market that they create. They create the volume and they create the movement, which are the two driving factors of every trader's business. Volume equals liquidity, movement equals opportunity. As a trader, it's our job to see what they're doing so we can jump into the whale's mouth and participate with it. That's it. End of story. We could develop models around fundamentals. We could develop models around statistical analysis on technical stuff. But the moment you get into the market in real time on the hard right edge and you're not able to take that to market and take money out on a daily basis, there's a disconnect. And you can see the passion come out of me when I talk about that because I take this very serious. There was some aha moments that happened in my trading career that I'm like, yeah, I just wasted the last two years of my life for absolutely nothing. But it wasn't for nothing. Because I'm here to tell you that if you're here to make a shift in your trading, everything that happened before here was information and it was a flow of resources that led you to where you are today. Now it's time to find whether or not what I'm about to show you makes sense to you or not. Okay, so let's delete this. Let's go here and let's start looking at market profile is a charting technique that is used on 30-day fractals. So when the market when the market went from floor trading to institutional tech trading, Market profile is a charting technique that's used by institutional floor traders, and anybody that trades market profile uses the profiles on 30-minute fractals. Why do you think that is? Why do you think 30-minute? Larry's got 30-minute fractals. Yeah, fractals. You know how I just used the word fractals? Remember I said it was the first part of it? 
because we need to define the strategy fractal before you could ever trade any system. And you have to have a time frame or a bar type before you can actually apply an indicator and a strategy. So fractals always comes first. So the reason it's 30 is because these traders are trading millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. They're not getting in on a four range bar, guys. I'm sorry to tell you, but the market moves too quick for them to even make decisions and to get filled on the liquidity. They're not coming in. It's impossible. HFTs don't even trade fast enough to do that. They're worried about fiber optics. Let's not get into that. Okay? The, the thing here is that this is a charting technique that replaces the need for us to move in and out of all the time-based charts and the range-based charts and the, and the Renko charts. It's a different way of looking at it. Now, I'm going to grab a cursor here. Okay? Do you see the red and the blue? Okay. Red, blue, red, blue. I'm just going to do this real quick. It's very simple. Okay. I've just drawn out one, two, three, four, five, six. This is one day. This is two day. This is three day. And we'll tell you how to break it down. This is four day. Okay. So anything in the red on this, anything, any, anytime the market's red down here, institutions view that as cheap, cheap, like, like inexpensive, like you're getting a deal. Anything up here in the blues, okay, that's called expensive territory. So let's pretend you and I, we go to uh, China today and we buy a cargo ship of shoes I like the shoe analogy it's simple we buy the cargo ship of shoes Nike's Adidas all the fancy stuff for the kids out there nowadays they've got Skechers and they got all these things I don't even know all of them anymore right tells me I'm getting a bit older and uh, we buy shoes for three dollars okay do we want to come back to Canada or the US and sell them for a dollar we would lose $2 on the, on the business, right? No, we want to come back and sell them for 9 The goal of any business is to buy merchandise, resources, or service at inexpensive levels and sell them for more expensive than what you paid for. The goal of a financial market is the same thing. But they just put this fancy term on it and they say, buy low, sell high. Okay, that's a great term. Show me where and show me how is the question we're asking ourselves. Well, this type of a charting technique always tells you where the institutions are looking to buy and sell. Does that mean the exact tick? No, it just means the area. Anything up here is expensive. Anything down here is cheap. Anything up here is expensive. Anything down here is cheap. At least we know somebody that's coming in with millions of dollars is trying to get filled buying down here, and they're trying to take their exits up here. It doesn't matter the exact tick. It just means they need to go from point A to point B in order for them to make money. Okay, now Larry, you're getting into technicals. We'll get in there. Okay, does everybody understand? The goal is to buy cheap down here. You want to buy cheap and you want to sell it expensive. That's pretty simple, right, guys? We can just agree with that's a simple concept that can be, we can take that to the next step. Okay, now what I'd like to do. I'd like to basically take it one step further. This is what we call big money traders. This is not a MACD. This is not a Bollinger Band, and this is not a BB or anything like that. This is a gauge of delta order flow that we can set the amount of contracts to. So anybody that's trading 20 contracts or more, 50 contracts or more, 100 contracts or more, that's big money traders. So it doesn't matter whether it's above the zero line or not because even as the market's going up or coming down you see there's green and red right there's green and red down here there's green and red up here even if the market's going up 
Anytime you get these red histograms, institutions are selling into that. This is what we, I like, to, I like to set it so I can track the hedge funds. I'm not really interested in tracking the institutions. They're much too large for me to, and they're trading on a much different type of a time frame. I'm more interested in the, in the, in the, the, the smart money. I'm not talking about the big money. I'd rather follow the professionals, guys trading 40, 50 contracts that are managing funds because that's more of an environment that dictates my, my per, par, participation around that, right, guys? So for me, if I'm looking at the market, I'm really only concerned with setting my, my settings to this so that I can gauge, you know, 10, 20, 30 lot traders because they're usually, if they're, if, they're, if they're trading 30, 40 contracts, they're able to participate because they've proven that they can trade that size. If you come in trading 20, 30 contracts consistently, then you're doing something right, okay? Now, I, wanna, I don't want to get too deep into this, but what I do want to do is I want to explain that we also need to look at the market from a place of supply and demand. I need to be able to show you where supply and demand is so that when we're looking at those profiles, whether it's cheap or whether it's expensive, I still want to pinpoint my entry because if I say, okay, we're in a cheap area, I don't want to just buy anywhere. I want to be able to locate the exact point of entry, and we use supply and demand for that. So these zones are based off volume profile. These are supply and demand volume zones. What I do is when I'm in an expensive area or a cheap area, I look for supply and demand to be able to time my entries inside those expensive or cheap areas. Okay. And then what I do is I try to add as much consistency as possible, and I try to understand if there's also support and resistance in the same locations. Because what we're doing now is we're, we're bringing market profile, we're bringing supply and demand, and we're bringing support and resistance all together in same locations. They're all measuring three different types of data, which is what we call non-conflicting data sources. Some people will call that confluence. I like to call it confluence of data because I'm taking three different sources of information and I'm trying to see if they all line up in the same area. Because if you have different tools, statistical tools, people call them indicators, I call them tools. Indicator is a great word for it. But if they're all lining up in the same area, but they're all telling you different forms of information, it's called confluence. Okay. So what I do is I always start looking at the profiles, and I don't actually trade the exact same way as, uh, as Raul does. Raul trades a different way than I do, but we use the same tools, and it's, it's his information and my information put together, right? So I'm here to show you what I do, and then you can also come in and see what I do and also what Raul does in our trading rooms, because they're both profitable. just depends on your style of trading, right? Now, I'm going to teach you a trend strategy, and then we're going to go on the charts, okay? Who in here would say that there's a trend trader in here? You know you're a trend trader. Can you guys give me a why if you like to trade with the market or, or against it? Because both are very profitable. You just need to understand how to do it. Now, Bill says always with. Perfect. You know your, your temperament. I've made money trading counter trend. Very, very, I've made a lot of money trading counter trend. Done, done very well with it. I make more money trading trend because for me, I just understand myself. So here's the thing, right? Raul, Raul, he trades both, but he prefers counter trend because he can, he can do that, right? Michael and I trade with the trend, but he'll also trade with the trend depending on his environment. So Abdullah does both, exactly. So for me, I trade what the market tells me to do. So in the days where the market's not trending, how could you be trend trading? You're going to have a harder time. So you need to have two sides of it. When the market is range bound, the profiles will tell you that. When the market is trending, the profiles will tell you that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you how to identify a trend. Yeah, you got to go sometimes. <laughs> this is what we call a D pattern. This is a profile. Now, I'm not going to get in here and teach you profiles all in one webinar. You can't, guys. It's impossible. That's why we have information sessions and then we have education rooms. A D pattern is a range, okay? Tops and bottoms of the range. And then it's followed by a P. 
Okay? It's followed by a P. What do you think this P is, guys, from point A to point B? is one, two. It's an uptrend. It's just we don't look at it the same way as an uptrend. We look at it as if we go from a D to a P. One, two. Okay? Yeah, exactly, B. B is a downtrend. We'll take a look at the downtrend after. Okay, but here's the thing. Do you see that there's green here as well? This tells me that there's funds buying into this uptrend. There's funds buying into this uptrend 20 contracts or greater because I have this indicator set at 20 contracts or greater. So as they're buying into this uptrend, this is not, an in, this is not a momentum oscillator. This is a money gauge. I want to know if there's a lot of traders that trading money management tools like big, big funds that are buying 20 contracts or greater into that trend. Because that tells me that there's still follow through by the big traders. It's called cumulative tick volume. Now, do you see here it says shift in value equals uptrend? What do I mean by shift in value? Do you see these little things over here? That's the you see how one's blue and one's black? The blue is time price opportunity. The black is volume price opportunity. I want to, do you see how there's a discrepancy? This is very, very important, guys. Take a picture of this. This is the key. This is, this is very, very sweet spot stuff, okay? This is this. If you're going to listen to anything during this conversation, this is the one you want to listen to. Do you see how there's a discrepancy between the blue and the black? Everybody give me a why if you're with me. This is the aha moment that I had to change my thinking. It's called arbitrage. You ever heard that term? Arbitrage. There's funds that build HFTs and automated bots around arbitrage. It's anomalies, I don't even know if I said that right, in the market that are exploited. Okay? This is what I call a buy zone because I can wrap lines around that discrepancy and it's an area where the market is expected to bounce or I would say find equalized value that has not been fulfilled. If these were all equal, then it's perfectly in balance. The market is perfectly in balance. Now, the market popped up. You see it traded all the way up to here. What I want to do is as the market's trading up and we've got one or two letters deep, as soon as we have three letters deep, we start trading the third time frame. That's 30 minutes, 60 minutes, an hour and a half. I want to be getting ready to buy here. Okay, I really want to get ready to buy here. Okay, why would I want to buy there? Because that's the value area low arbitrage. That's value. See how there's a volume profile here? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete this and make this very simple. Remember I said institutions viewed as cheaper expensive? This is cheap. This is expensive in this profile. This is cheap. This is expensive. So if we're trending up, and I know the institutions are buying that, a counter trend trader would want to be selling up here, fighting the market. A trend trader wants to wait for them to bring it back down to fill in value. Value at arbitrage. Value supported by big money traders value supported by direction. It's very simple. It's very simple stuff, guys. It seems like a lot. I can teach it to you very simply. So can my guys. Let's take a look at how we support that. What happened here? Big pop in the market. I'm going to show you some trades yesterday I took. I, uh, doing the exact same thing in the NASDAQ. Like it, it's just once you understand this, I guarantee that you're never going to want to look at the market ever again the same way. That's, I just, I traded order flow, I traded supply and demand. As soon as I started integrating this in my mind, I said, I'm never trading anyway ever again. I just make way more money doing it. So here you can see it bought, it popped from here. And as soon as it popped, do you see the institutions? Do you see the institutions selling down here in the red? It's because as soon as it found value, as soon as it gets to the top, they're selling into that again. They understand that their business is to buy low and get ready to sell high. So as soon as it starts to rally, the reason why that selling happens 
is because they're profit taking into it already. And then all the people that are late that basically come in and they're like, oh, they're trending, it's trending up, and then it slams back down again is because they didn't realize that that's how market manipulation works. It's really not manipulation. It's called smart money knows how to trade against dumb money all day long. Okay? Now, I don't mean to say anybody's dumb in here. I just mean to say that it's, it's the, the greed and fear concept. Okay? So let's go in here and basically take a look here. I'm going to go through this quick. At the exact same time at that area, there was a demand zone and a support zone at the exact same time. It just adds confirmation. This is on a smaller fractal going into the data. So I like to use different charts to show that. I have a profile chart on one tab, and on the other chart, I actually have a supply and demand and support and resistance chart so that I can go into the areas where it's expensive and cheap, and I can fine-tune where I want to be buying and selling. Do you notice how I have the box here? That, that, that box which was on the other, this box right here that I have drawn on the profile is the exact same box. It's just on a different chart. And do you notice how we have a demand zone and a FIB support here as well? That's FIB levels, confluence levels. It's fine tuning the entry point so that you can be a sniper and you can cut your risk down drastically. You start on a bigger time frame and then you can go into the data and be a sniper. Let's take a look from the short side real quickly. Sorry about all the arrows. I just wanted you to see that this was a more actively trending market. Do you notice how we go, okay, D, D, but a downward sloping D, and then it drops down into a B, and then it drops down into a B again. This is a downtrending market, but the profiles tell you that, that we're in a range a bit, shifted slightly, okay? Do you notice how I've drawn boxes at the tops of value? Why do you think that is? When I say value, remember, you see the arbitrage right here? There's the arbitrage, there's the arbitrage. It's that discrepancy. Yeah, because if you're a trend trader, I only want to be selling where it's expensive. Right here. Here. I don't want to be buying value. A counter trend trader is buying value. A counter trend trader is buying value. A trend trader with a downward market selling retail, selling retail, selling retail. It's simple. So let's go back to the, the, the shoe business. If you're a trend trader and you're, your business is shoes, you want to be in the trend of the shoe business. You want to go to China, buy the shoes at a dollar, come to Canada, sell them at three. Right? That's the business. Same thing with trading oil. Same thing with trading the S&P or the bonds. You want to be selling it expensive and buying it cheap. And you want to be able to see where the market tells you that is. That's why we use profiles first. Look for the arbitrage at value rate highs in a downtrend. Do you notice that even though, look at down here, even though the market was dropping, institutions are buying into that. Now this is the this is the stuff that most traders will never understand. It's because they're thinking much differently than us. They're buying here because maybe they're hedging a position for three days out. That's the whole reason why we can't be so concerned about what they're doing. Because we never know whether it's on a short time frame perspective or if it's, if it's they're balancing out a crop or a hedge or they're trying to hedge oil for the next contract rollover five days out from it. We never know that. They're trading millions of dollars. Our job is to see that if we're shortened from here, are they selling at that time? That's, a con that's what we call confirmation. But we should never just rely on what they're doing to make a decision. That's why you never use just order flow to tell you what to do. You need to understand retail and value on a bigger time frame to see what the institutions see as expensive. It's an area. 
it's not specifics. What we do is we teach you the specifics inside that area because we study it. We study the specifics. So that when you sit down at your desk tomorrow or Monday, you say, okay, I lost a bunch of money this year. It's time to make a new change in how I think because if I don't, I'm going to keep getting what I'm always doing. And that's the goal. I remember last year I was 250 pounds and I was sicker than a dog. Couldn't handle the way I was living, sitting at my desk every day. So I decided to make a change. I stopped listening to the 300-pound guy on the phone at the gym, start, started listening to the bodybuilder that really had the body that I wanted. And since then, I'm now at 186. Okay? What did I do? I made a decision to stop listening to the wrong message, start listening to the right message. Okay? Same thing with trading. Same thing with trading. It's just, who do you listen to, right? I had to be willing to make a change in the way I think and the way I do things in order to get different results. Okay? Look at where the market sold off from these areas. Okay? Drop from here. Inside of supply and resistance at the exact same location. It's no different than this. We're just looking at it on the opposite side. Now, I could teach you the counter trend strategy, but then Jeanette would get real upset. She'd probably start drinking coffee. <laughs> Right? And that's not the goal here. <laughs> right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two to three minutes, show you some live trade examples that I took yesterday and the day before. It won't take me a long time because I've already explained the strategy. And then we'll give you some detailed questions, and I can spend a couple minutes answering some questions real quickly. Okay? I want to go in here, and I want to basically show you. I started trading for the combines. I, 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 can, I like to talk about what I'm doing because Raul's got his stuff on the website. He's got his broker statements and you can spend all week long with him during the markets when they're open because that's why he runs my trading rooms but I wanted to share what I've been doing over the past couple weeks because I have a different perspective than the full-time trader I'm taking the combines with top step to prove that even the small guys can make money and even the guys trading ones and two contracts can make money okay and I'm doing it in an environment that's monitored and watched by them because that way there's a lot there's more skin in the game right there's more skin in the game and I'm doing this more for to show you that yes I can prove to you that not only Raul and all the other guys can show you we can do but we can all help you if you're just willing to listen okay so first and foremost I started trading the combines February 1st of this year okay now I run a business we wouldn't be here if we didn't have the business so I'm not trading all day long I trade two three hours max a day maybe two three days a week if I have the luxury of trading every day, I'm gratefully blessed. But sometimes you need to you need to pick and choose your battles. Some people in here can only trade a couple days. Maybe you have a job. Maybe you're on the road. Whatever the case may be. And some of you might have full time ap application. So I'm here to show you that you know trading a couple days a week. Only the U.S. morning sessions that I trade. I'm coming in around 7:30, 7 8 o'clock, and I'm trading to about 11:30. Okay, now I trade four markets. I trade crude oil, I trade gold, I trade the euro, and I trade the NASDAQ. We won't get into why I picked those four today, but if you have questions on that, I can share that with you. And what I've done is I'm going to show you that it's not straight to the moon. But what is, I trade, the, these results, Kendall's, are on one to two contract max. I traded two contracts. These are two contracts. And I'm doing that on purpose. Because I could be trading larger size. This is for the $150,000 combine with top step trader. Okay, you see it's at 154, 404, 55. That's net commissions. If you go here, there's no commissions in these stats right here because the way I set this up with Ninja, it's different API with their combines. But you'll notice that this is a little bit slightly less than this. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I actually I actually enter two contracts and depends on. Depends on the, the range, Stephen. If the range is tight, I'm all in, all out at the value area high and value area low. If I have a bigger range, I'm going to scale in on exiting two contracts. But that's more for the application. But I'll talk about that. Like if I'm in a tight range in that trend, I'm all in, all out because I don't have a lot of room to value. But what I'll do is if I'm trading, if I have a bigger range like yesterday on the NASDAQ, which we'll show you, I had, I had the ability to take exits in two spots. 
right? So I want to talk about the, the, the actual ebb and flow of real trading. Do you notice how the equity peaks are getting higher and the drawdowns are not as big? That's the most important lesson that any realized trader can learn. It's what do you do when that's happening? Well, Joseph, that's that's not that that was not uh, not all the time. That was only because I had tech issues, and I was. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Those that altered my stats, but unlike most people, unlike most people, it's. Um, it, you can't reset these accounts. These aren't reset accounts. You don't keep resetting them and it's like, okay, whatever. Like, you know, that's real trading, right? So the goal here is to understand that what do you do when you take a drawdown? I grind my way out with one lots. Because if you can grind your way out with one contract, you can tell yourself that you know how to trade. Right? That's the lesson that we're going to teach you because sometimes... You know, for me personally, I can teach you how to do that. Ryo can teach you that. Michael can teach you how to do that. I have my own spice on it. But the goal here is to understand that uh, when, when you're doing good, you know, you can trade a little bit more aggressively. But when you're coming down into these drawdowns, what are you doing? You're not scaling in and you're not averaging down. You're growing your account skill sets by lowering size and grinding out and becoming a better trader. Now, because I have, I have the ability to trade 10 contracts with this account size with the combines. They give you a maximum of 10 contracts for their combines. I'm trading two contracts, guys. Why do you think that is? Because whenever you trade for a fund or a hedge fund or any type of combine, they give you access to capital, but they can take it away just as easily. And the reason why they give you access to capital is to test your emotional and your management. To see just because you have access to money, should you be trading all of it at all the time. Earn the right to trade size. If, if you're doing this consistently over a couple months, you've proven that you can trade. You can increase contract size. You do that over a year and you're trading 10 contracts. Right? If you can show yourself that every time you get a drawdown, you grind your way out on half size and you consistently prove that you can pull yourself into positive territory, then you should be able to increase exposure to risk. But you can't come in there to the market and do that and expect yourself to be able to believe in your abilities. That's the, that's the lesson, is that if you know that you, you cheated yourself and you just got lucky, you still will never trust your abilities. But if you know that what you did was make the right decisions every single time and you showed yourself through action that you can do it, when you increase your position sizing, it's because you feel like you deserve the opportunity to. When Raul started trading, he didn't start trading at 10 contracts. It took him three years to get to that risk coverage. Now he's going up to 15 and 20. And as a result, instead of making 25 grand a month, he's making 50. That's a lot of money. But it took him a few years to get to that comfort level. Okay, now I'm going to just look at the NASDAQ for one second and we're going to end with this example. I'm not going to go in. I'm not going to go into the, the actual aspect of all of it, but I want to talk about just the example and then respect the other presenter's time. Okay, this was the trade I took yesterday for the combine. Okay, and I didn't take a look at the rest of the day. There's a lot of movement. This is a 30 minute time frame. Okay, it's a 30 minute time frame. All I was concerned about was the morning. Okay, all I was concerned about was the morning when it shifted up out of the profile. So this was key here. It went from here to here. And I'm going to basically switch it out. Okay, at that time, and this is historical profile, so that way you, it's hard to see in the real time. But what's happening here is during that time, the profile went from a D to a P. And there was arbitrage here. Okay? I wanted to buy here at the shift 
and I wanted to, to see if they were going to drive it further into a bigger P. On trending days, you'll see this continue all the time. When they decide to not carry that trend, it'll fail here, and they'll slam it down. That's the difference between trend continuations and reversals. But the way I've been trading, and this is why I wanted to show this, and it's been doing very, very well once I flipped hats to do this, is at least you get the opportunity to make money in every range where they decide whether that's going to happen or not. That's the real secret, is that at least before they prove that they're going to trade the trend higher or they're going to reverse it, you have the ability to make money here, okay, all the time. If they continue the trend, you can scale out with larger profits and do it again here. If they fail and they drop it, you've already taken profits here. So at least you're never exposed to risk at the failure. That's the lesson. Because what they do here on the NASDAQ, okay, is they broke it out. I bought here. Do you see how I scaled out two contracts? Because the range was large here. And then what happened? News came out. I'm not playing at this time at the open. No way. They tried to push it higher to break it out again, but you notice I didn't trade any more times because the range had shifted. And guess what they did? They just slew it back into the range. It was a failed trend. The way that this strategy works is you have the ability to trade inside that value area while they're proving it. And you get the first opportunity to trade that value area. Same thing on the short side. Same thing on the short side. Uh, if we go in here and we take a look at crude oil, and then we'll leave it at that. Same thing happened on the short side here, back to back to back trades. Do you notice how selling high, buying low, selling high, buying low? People would say, well, that's a trend trading strategy. Yes, it is when the market's moving down right? Do I need to worry about the whole move? No, I just need the move. I need a strategy that's replicatable all the single time. Everybody's worried about catching the big trade. You should be worried about getting paid first. Get paid consecutively, then add a contract, then leave a runner, catch the big trade once in a while, and stroke your ego. The biggest thing is to get paid. You should be, your job as a trader is to make money, not be right about the market. That's the biggest lesson I had to teach myself over, over since 2008 was I was always trying to catch the big move and try to impress myself and everybody else. Once I stopped doing that, I started to make money consistently. That really is the biggie, Bill says, exactly. Okay, now, guys, I'm going to give you a link. Okay, I'm going to give you a link. This is, uh, and thanks again, Jeanette, for letting me come in here and share this with you. If you like what you've seen here, like, I could spend all day, this is a passion to me, this isn't just a business. I could teach you all day how to trade, and, and I, could, I guarantee that over time you'll learn it. It's very simple, but there's a few other strategies you can learn as well. We run a program, we call it the Online Futures Program, but really it's just a fancy name to say we got a bunch of trade rooms that you can learn how to trade in. Okay. And the difference with our trade rooms is I've built it in an environment that, that we will teach you what to do during live markets first, but then when you're not in the live markets, every night after the market's closed, weekends, people like to learn in dynamic environments, live markets, and then on their own self-study. Right, so what we've done is I've built what we call a membership video training area that if you are a subscriber to our trading rooms, you see where it says video and live training on all of our software? It's because what we've done is we've basically created an environment that when you subscribe to our trading rooms, you get access to what we call a video training room 
that as long as you're subscribing to our trading rooms, you can come in and watch all the video training on all of our software before you buy any indicators. So instead of wondering, oh my God, I'm going to spend $1,000 on this tool, or I'm going to spend $1,000 on that tool and that system, just subscribe to our trading room, come in and watch it done in real time, so you can formulate an educated decision on what you're doing, and then you can train yourself on all the indicators while you're doing that. And then what happens is that in a week from now, or two weeks from now, if you really like what you've done, if you really like it, okay, then basically what will happen is you can choose to invest in software at that time. We don't want you buying tools and then you're not using them and then feeling like you got juped. It's not, it's not good business. Okay, so hopefully you guys can relate with that because I think it's a better way to help you. Okay, I'm going to put a link in the chat box here. Very simple. That order form will bring you to this. Okay. And this order form basically maps out our trade rooms. It maps out everything that comes with it. This is what comes with your trade room. You get a free boot camp. We call the boot camp the video training on software. But it's really we're, you're, you're, you're subscribing to a trading room, and we're going to show you how to make money before you spend thousands of dollars on software that you may or may not like. At least you get to learn how to trade the way we trade before you invest in tools to use them. And hey, we've Sean, ever, yeah. is, this the, is the link the same link that's the... Um, I think I have it, it's, but it's a short did I, link. Did I give you the link here? Oh, maybe yeah, I it's the golden trading, golden, goldenzonetrading.com slash order. I you know what? That, you probably have the better link. If you have the link, maybe you can put it there. Yeah, I have, have a short it. link because they can't click that link in the um, in the box. They have to actually like, Please put it in. It yeah, right. please. Yeah, yeah that, totally. Thanks, Jeanette. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. I'll do it right now. See, I almost did it perfect, guys. You know, that's why we got Jeanette here. <laughs> she's, she's the one to save the day. So Jeanette's going to put a link in the chat box, guys. And what I'll do is I'm just going to basically come in here and keep this real short and sweet. When you come into our trading room, this is what you get. We're going to do it all. But most importantly, our boot camp comes with everything for you to learn before purchasing. Let's just, let's just end with that. How many times have you guys bought something and you're like, this is just a waste of time and money? I know I have $25,000 deep into a training program that I never use years ago when I first started. I don't look at that as, as negativity. I look at that as the best lesson I ever learned in my life. Okay, It's $197 a month to join our trading room. You get two for the price of one because you get access to two educators. And when you're a member, all of our software is discounted anyway. So if you decide that, you know what, I really like the market profile strategy, or I really like the order flow strategy that hasn't even been discussed here today, right, then you can invest in the tools at that time. So it's strategy focused first, education focused first. Then if you like the software, you can invest in the software. Okay. Give me a why if you guys understood that. Did anybody learn something from that? Did it make sense? Hopefully you guys found value in that. Jeanette, it's been a, a privilege to come in on a Saturday. This is uh it's it's great to be around like minded traders and, and uh um you know, at the very least, guys, I hope you'll take us up on the offer to come in and trade with us next week. Monday to Thursday we run our rooms from not 8.30 in the morning, all the way till noon, and then you have access to me and my team at any time you need. Okay, so I'll leave this up here. I know Jeanette's got another presenter coming on here right now, so I don't know if there's time for questions, but if not, Jeanette, you can kick me out, and I can go to the gym and work on my, uh, <laughs> my goals of lifestyle and balance. Get your goals and lifestyle and balance on. <laughs> I'll tell you what, why don't we do this? Um, take three questions. Just take the top three that you can. Because um, I'd hate for us to not at least do a couple of questions. And um, then uh, we'll move on. Well, a, a couple of questions here. I think one's important. It says, what platforms, what platforms are available? So for the past three years, we've dedicated our time coding for NinjaTrader. 
but the reality is is that we are now at an expansion phase where we're actually porting our software over to TradeStation right now as well. And and once that's done, we'll probably be coding everything into Java web base so it connects to every platform in the world. Uh, we're expanding pretty pretty rapidly. It's pretty good. Um, for now, it's on Ninja. We've got three we got three tools available for TradeStation, uh, but we have seven more to code over over the next couple months. It'll probably take longer than that because I'm optimistic, but our programmers put us in place. <laughs> And uh, and then eventually we'll be going over to Thinkorswim and then multi charts and stuff like that. But the reason we started in Ninja was the, due to the advanced uh, advanced um, tools. The three that are available now are the supply and demand zones and the market profile software that you see me demonstrate today. The next one will be the Fibs. But for now, it's on Ninja. And here's the neat thing: if you're using a different platform. If you're using a different platform, we have a lot of traders on different platforms that use the Ninja for the analysis and they, they execute in their other charts, right? So it really depends on your comfort zone. We're doing our best to get ourselves into every platform, but that takes time and it takes a lot of testing because these are very, very, very complex tools. But, but here's the cool thing, right? The strategies are simple. We just use advanced analysis to make it, comp, you know, you know, to, to give ourselves confidence in the ability to execute, right? Like that arbitrage in the market profile, like that's a, that's a very serious secret gem, right? It took me eight years to find that gem. If I would have gave up four years in, I'd, I wouldn't be here, right? So that's the gift that we can share with you guys. Um, it says, okay, so not a problem, Joel. Think of soon as easy to code things. Yeah, but it's not about the easiness of the, the code, Rick. It's about whether or not the platform can do what we need it to do, right? So some platforms, the way they're coded, do not allow for advanced analysis, the way that things are written in, in Ninja and, and some. And we will, we will find a workaround. We will always find a workaround. It's just a bit, being able to meet at what the platform allows for coding. And it's being able to take out stuff that can't be done and, and add stuff that can, and it's about finding that balance. But we're doing our very, very best to make them available on all platforms. But at least if you're not using Ninja, come into the trade room for a couple of weeks and see if it's worth your time. Is if you're making more money just being in the room than you were ever doing before, really doesn't matter what platform you're on, you can still at least learn by us for a couple months and then and make the decision down the road. Yeah. Lester says, being a member for three months and he's ready to fly. <laughs> can you buy the indicators? You can buy the indicators, but uh, out of respect to uh, Jeanette, we wanted this to be um, to be focused on the strategy and the trading rather than the, the software. So if you're interested in the indicators, there's the emails on the chart or on the, on the screen here. Just shoot me an email. And uh, when we're done with the gym, I'll, I'll reply. Yeah. So let me see here. Uh, I work full time on the left co west coast. Can I start at 9 a.m.? Can I? Yeah. So here's the neat thing: is that even if yeah, you can you can come in. Our trade rooms run till 12 noon Eastern time, around there, 11:30 to 12 Eastern, and then all the New York session goes for lunch, right? So so if you even come in halfway through the morning, we record every single class. So even if you miss a day or you're not able to make every single class, every day we upload those recordings into that video members area. So you're always going to be able to review everything we've done. And, and that's because not everybody learns best during live markets. Sometimes you learn in good environments and then you have to restudy it after. It's just, you know, some people learn in different ways. So we want to provide the, an environment for you to, to, get, to get both, right? So... I think that's it, Jeanette. I want to be fair to the other guys, and uh, and uh, hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed the presentation. And uh, it was fantastic. We look forward to working with you guys in the future. All right. So glad you were here, Sean. I'm going to dismiss you. You're welcome to come back in as a panelist. Oh wait, Perfect. you're going to the gym. Never mind. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to yeah. dismiss you. I got to go burn <laughs> off that coffee that you never had. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right, Thank guys, you so much. Care. God bless. Have a great Have a good day. Good afternoon. Bye.